Hi, uh, I'm Sanjeev Kohli, actor and comedian. Although I suppose it's only comedy for laughing, isn't it? Anyway, I've got some lockdown maths problems for you. Cards on the table. I've got ridiculous hair. Lockdown hair. It's massive. It can barely fit in the house. Now the good news is that I've managed to get hold of my hairdresser. Uh, he plans to open in December and the first appointment he can get me is the 23rd of January. Which is fantastic, except he's bumped up his prices by 15%. So here's my question. If my regular haircut costs £18, how much is my next haircut going to cost? Okay, so my usual haircut is £18. Calculating a 15% increase in your head might seem tricky, but here is a top tip. First, work out what 10% off is, then half that 10% to give you 5%, then add both of those totals together and you have 15%. Using that tip, here we go. Let's work out 10% first. You can do this by moving the decimal point one place to the left. And that gives us £1.80 but that's only 10%. So now we need to work out 5%. To do that, we can half the answer we just worked out for 10%. So half of £1.80 is 90 pence. To find 15%, we need to add our totals from 10% and 5% together. So £1.80 add 90 pence gives you £2.70. So we've now worked out how much money 15% is going to be, but we need to apply this to the question. If the original haircut was £18 and there's a 15% increase, we need to add our £2.70 to £18 to find the total for the new haircut. So the answer is £20.70. Well done. Let's just hope the haircut makes me look 80% less ridiculous than I do now. I've had this brilliant idea, right? It's really original. I'm going to make banana bread in lockdown. No one else has done it, okay? Now, I've looked up a recipe and it's quite simple, but the only problem is I've only got the recipe for one banana bread and I want to make 20 banana breads to share with the neighbours. So for one banana bread, I need 120 grams of self-raising flour, 140 grams of butter, I need 100 grams of sugar and, um, oh yeah, three bananas. So if those are the ingredients for one banana loaf, how many of those ingredients will I need for 20? Okay, so here are the ingredients again. For one banana bread, you need 120 grams of self-raising flour, 140 grams of butter, 100 grams of sugar, and three bananas. So what do you think we'll need to do to all those numbers to make enough ingredients for 20? That's right, we need to multiply them all by 20. And a top tip to remember here is that to multiply anything by 20, you can just multiply by 10 and then double that to get your answer. This works because 20 is twice as big as 10. So let's start with the flour. The recipe says 120 grams. So we need to times this by 20. Now remember our top tip. We're going to multiply that 120 by 10 first, which gives us 1,200 grams, or 1.2 kilograms. And then we need to double this to get us to 20 times. 2 times 1,200 is 2,400. So the total amount of self-raising flour is 2,400 grams, or 2.4 kilograms. Now, onto the butter. We need 140 grams times 20. Again, multiply 140 by 10 first. So that makes 1,400 grams, or 1.4 kilograms. Then we need to double this to make 20. 1,400 grams times 2 is 2,800 grams. So the total amount of butter we need for the banana bread is 2,800 grams, or 2.8 kilograms. What about sugar? Well, that one's nice and easy. 100 grams times 20. You could probably do this in your head, but 100 times 10 gives us 1,000, and double that gives us 2,000. So we'll need 2,000 grams of sugar, or two kilograms. 
And finally, the essential ingredient. How many bananas will we need? The recipe said you need three bananas to make one banana bread. Times that by 10 makes 30, and then double that, 30 times two, which makes 60. 60 bananas. So the answer is, for 20 banana breads, you will need 2,400 grams, or 2.4 kilograms, of self-raising flour, 2,800 grams, or 2.8 kilograms, of butter, 2,000 grams, or 2 kilograms, of sugar, and 60 bananas. Now that is going to get you a lot of funny looks at the supermarket, but trust me, it will be worth it. So, as you know, I've been making banana bread for all my neighbours and they've been grateful, very grateful. So grateful, in fact, they've returned the favour and they've been sending me food in Tupperware containers, unlabeled Tupperware containers. What it means is I've got these 12 Tupperware containers unlabeled that I've taken out of my fridge. I know that two contain lasagna, four of them contain tiramisu, and six of them contain banana bread that's been returned to me by my neighbours. So here's my question. If I pick up one of these Tupperware containers, what are the chances that it contains A, lasagna, B, tiramisu, or C, my own banana bread? This sum is about probability or chance. That means how likely something is to happen. And the top tip here is, when you're working out the probability of something, write it as a fraction in its simplest form. To recap, there are 12 unlabeled boxes and three sums to work out. Let's start with the first one. If I choose one of these boxes, what are the chances it's lasagna? Well, we know there are two lasagnas in the pile somewhere. So, I have a 2 in 12 chance of picking out a lasagna. 2 in 12 is 2 over 12, or we can simplify that to 1 sixth. The next question was, what is the chance I get a tiramisu? There are four boxes of tiramisu, so this time, the chance of me picking a tiramisu is 4 in 12, or 4 over 12, which can be written as a simplified equation, one third. Okay, we're doing great. So, the final part of the question is, what is the chance of me getting my own banana bread back? Well, there were six boxes of banana bread returned. Six, unbelievable behavior. So the chance of me picking my own banana bread is six in 12. 6 over 12, which can be simplified to 1 half, which will be going straight back to the neighbours, by the way. 